Hey everybody, it's August 2nd and you are here at the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Working Group for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth. Um, good to see everybody here. I hope everybody's doing good. Um, yeah. I'm digging deep today. <laughs> I'm really going to help if you... If, <laughs> but yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Make it happen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, hi. Um, hope of, uh, if you have not put your name in the agenda, please do that if you would like to. Um, and of course, this meeting, like all other chaos meetings, is under our code of conduct. So just keep that in mind. And if you've not read that, um, you can find that on our website. So take a look at that. Um, and also, it's in our repo, I believe. Um, if uh, you are not sure what this meeting is about, this is where we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion related topics. So it could be something a metric we're working on, or it's just something generally um, in that kind of wheelhouse in uh, in the chaos community, or sometimes even external. So it's kind of a catch-all. We also talk about badging here as well. So we we talk about a lot of things in these meetings. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so the first thing on our agenda, just wanted to say a, an official welcome. Here, I'll just put this in here officially. Offic official welcome to Don Foster. I can type and talk at the same time. Who is our new director of data science? We're so happy she started technically yesterday. So, I'm super excited. Super excited. Celebrate. What's the celebrate? Ta-da. Fireworks. Let's do fireworks. There we go. Ta-da. Oh, yeah. Ta-da. Party popper. There we go. Um, and we wanted to just pass along um, if you, you know, obviously this is super new for chaos, um, the whole data science um, kind of official movement. So if you want to join in that um, those discussions, you can join this data science channel. And that's where that will those will happen. That's where Dawn's going to do a lot of her work in building the community um, around data science within chaos. So if that's interesting to you. Feel free to join and, and get in on those conversations from the foundation from the very beginning. Um, anything to add on that, Dawn? No, I think I think that's it. I'll, I'll yeah, like I said, I'm, like Elizabeth said, I'll I'll share stuff in that channel so you can kind of see what I'm working on and give me feedback and and help out with stuff. That would be great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, the next thing is we want to let this community or people in this group know um, if you have not heard, we do have some passes uh, available to All Things Open, which is um, coming up in October in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so if this is something you're interested in attending, uh, we do have some passes. Um, we can also do exhibitor only passes if you would just want to hang out in the exhibit hall or maybe do the hallway track. That is also an option for you. And then if we do end up getting rid of all of these and you still want to go, we can get uh, uh, the tickets for $99. So just um, the only ask is that you would help us with staffing the booth at some point during the conference, because um, it is a pretty busy conference. It's pretty big. So um, it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to do, uh, I'll take the, you know, the bulk of it, but um, it would be great to have help. So um, if you are interested in any of these tickets, just let me know and we'll I'll show you how to get registered with the, the code and everything. Um, I just quickly want to point out too, it does not include travel expenses, so you would be responsible for getting there on your own. But if you are um, planning to go or want to go and, and can make that happen, um, yeah, let me know. It's a great conference. It's a multi-track, multi-discipline, um, all about open source, but a lot of different things going on at that conference. So anybody have questions on that? From yesterday, just for what it's worth, I am having chaos sweatshirts made, like branded chaos zip zip up hoodies, yeah. and that could be something that we maybe raffle off because I don't get a ton made, you know, because they're yeah. kind of they're kind of pricey. Ooh, let me put that in here. Um, chaos, yeah, they are. Sweatshirts are really pricey, aren't they? How many would you um, like a like three, two, three, something like that? So yeah. raffle or just one? Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking one, but I mean, okay. I could. Do, but I mean, I think the grand total the grand total order is like twenty, maybe, just because okay. they're they're pretty pricey to have an embroidered sweatshirt. 
Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. We are also, uh, go we decided yesterday in the community meeting, we're going to raffle off another Lego globe, which was really popular and brought some people to the conference. And I actually got an email this morning of someone that had stopped by and said they are looking into Augur. They're going to probably join the community. They were literally digging into chaos. So yay, it worked. <laughs> it worked. So that made me really happy. All that work for one person. One person, yeah. They're going to be amazing. I know it. I know it. It's life changing. Like done. Yeah. <laughs> the question of cost. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally worth it in my book. <laughs> um okay any other questions about all things open or conference stuff at all nope okay um this was an item from last week we talked about going through the repo and moving over yeah uh the metric ideas i did not do that i'll do it i promise i just didn't get a chance to uh, and then Matt, did, you did the tier one check. Do you have any comments on that? Are you still kind of working on that or? Uh, well, there were a lot of terms identified in that tier one, both from an inclusive naming perspective. I'm um, have to go track it down, but I'll get it here in a second. Okay, no worries. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot or anything for that. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to like kind of think about how we want to move forward with that first and then kind of bring it back to the community of like kind of a plan to get that fixed because I mean we could I, I mean it's it's a like I said it's fairly extensive and it will affect a lot of repos. And just like saying, like, this has to be changed today seems like. That would not be received real well. Yeah. Maybe there's some like low hanging fruit we can do first. Probably. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Um, and I'll just say implementing and prioritizing. Is that fair? Yeah. Probably a lot easier to do some of the non code repositories, some of the ones where we do mostly markdown files, because those are likely to have less automation that might be impacted. Yeah. Those might be agree. Low hanging fruit. Yep. Um, I also wasn't sure, Matt, if this was something you wanted to bring up with um, like the, the knowledge base folks or um, any of like the webs. I know we don't really have the website content meetings but it feels like it might kind of touch on that even though it's not website but it's like documentation you like, know so like connect in what way i don't know like just bring it to that group or like we because we have a channel for technical writers and i know yeah. folks are always looking for stuff to do so i don't know yeah I, let's maybe think about like a path for like what had you and don had mentioned because like I I agree we don't just want a bunch of like PRs that could really have a cascading impact on yeah. code repositories. And I mean for for a lot of that like the the work to find like the word that's on that inclusive naming list um, as associated with a non-code repo, like the amount of work to just change it there, as opposed to identifying the repo, putting a call out for somebody to change it. I got you. Mm -hmm. It's just easier to do it right at the right then and there. Got you, got you. Uh, after the search, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's think about it. Um, you know, it's it's not urgent, but it is important. So we'll figure out uh, how to move forward in the best way. Like you said, to not like screw everything up <laughs> in everybody's repos, that'd probably be good. 
um, to not do that. So yeah, thanks for doing that search though, Matt. That's it's. I'm glad that we did that and yeah. shed light on it because that was a little surprising. So okay, um, yeah. So I'm glad someone did their AI, their action item. Appreciate that, Matt. <laughs> so, someone did something, so that's good. I feel the pressure is off me now. But next week now is on me, so I will I will fix what I'm gonna fix. Um, okay, so on to, I guess, uh, or, or we'll just bring up badging. Um, just wanted to let people know that uh, there is a new orientation scheduled for the 17th. I think this is the right time. Uh, I know it's definitely 3 p.m. West Africa time, so I think that translates to 9 a.m. U.S. Central, if I did that right, hopefully. Um, you do not have to sign up for that. Um, if you would like to be added to the invite, just let me know. Uh, here, I'll put that in here. So you get a reminder, and I can do that. Um, but you don't have to register or anything like that. And if you aren't even really sure what this is about, you can come, and it's no obligation, like no, nothing. It's just basically to learn about what that means, what badgers do for our event badging program, and um, kind of what it takes and, and how the process flows. So even if you don't want to be a badger, um, it's good information, especially if you're um, helping out with the badging website or any of the, the other badging things going on, the badging bot, for instance. Uh, it's good to kind of have a good idea of what how that workflow goes right now, and you'll see how we need to make it better. <laughs> that, will be, that will become evident to you immediately, how we can make that better. So um, please feel free to join if you like and you are able to. Any questions on Badger orientation? Okay, everyone's so quiet. I love it. We're just powering through the agenda. <laughs> everyone's just listening in. I feel that vibe. I do. I feel it. It's totally fine. Um, okay, chaos liaisons. I'm going to uh, assume that Matt put this in. Yeah, so I felt the pressure yesterday. <laughs> To work on this deck. I don't know really if this is the right spot for it, but I just thought I'd share it quickly here. Um, so basically, what I was trying to do is just identify um, what a liaison is. So anybody can take a look at that link. Um, and then I tried to, if you scroll down just a little bit, like what the expectations are for meeting attendance. Um, and then those in meeting discussions, how there's an expectation to kind of lead some of that. And then publication, like maybe I could put like metrics publication or metrics and model publication, something like that, that there's a, an expectation to kind of assist in that process of publishing new metrics or metrics models that kind of come from these discussions. So really, um, the first part is just saying here, you're expected to go probably to about six meetings a, a month. So it would be two... Um, the two context groups that you're associated with, as well as common and probably metrics models. I think it would make sense to attend both of those. Um, so I would also, um, so that's, I think that's a, a, a good expectation. I don't know what people think of that. Is that too much to ask of a liaison to attend those meetings? I mean, we could do something like it's just once a month for common, you know, the first, whatever, the first meeting of the month for common and the first meeting of the month for metrics model to get it down to four. I, I kind of like that only because like this is basically six hours mm -hmm. uh, that we're asking for people and then also any other side work, you know, the actual like work work. So yeah. that might be a lot. Okay, well, let's just put that down to like, you can just change it to one. Fair enough. One, and then maybe in parentheses, just put like first of the month or something like that. First meeting. Oh, we can try it. And if it's like, oh, this is not nearly enough or too much, whatever, like, yeah, we can change it. First meeting of the month. Um, do, we, uh, do we also want them to make sure they're in those Slack channels? I don't know. Uh, I hadn't put that in there in this moment. Do we need to say it or is it? assumed um uh we could say it 
So join, you know, it would just be joining three Slack channels. Yeah. The respective context group and then. To be fair, those Slack channels, at least the ones that I'm in, are pretty low yeah. volume. Mm -hmm. That way, if there are async stuff or links or whatever. Oh. And then let's just WG models. I think that's right. Yep. Okay. And then the in meeting discussions are. The hope is is that the liaisons um, can kind of speak during the context group meeting as well as the common and or metric model meeting to to kind of speak to um, like let's say that they're in the common work group meeting like what is the motivation for this model who's the audience like what did they understand from that context working group meeting and kind of so express that a little bit um and then likewise like when they return to the context group like also communicate like here's where the metric or metric model is currently at and here are the open questions with respect to that metric or metric model so it's just kind of facilitating the discussion between the respective groups Uh, do we want to also add that in here? Just um, uh, coordinate, um, communicate the status of met metric or metric model. Context. That's good. And then this is pretty self-explanatory. There's probably not a lot there, to be honest with you. Like when it's done, it's done. And it just kind of goes to you as an example. Um, what about like starting the doc? That's, that's in the meeting attendance. I didn't know where to put it. So um, just do a search on template. Over here, yeah. A liaison provides, yeah. If it is agreed, maybe we pull that out in a separate section. We could, yeah, it was kind of buried in there. So just, yeah, and maybe like in meeting, just do go up to the in meeting one. Okay. Um, and then maybe below communicate or above somewhere in there. Is that fair? Just yeah, in. and then we could maybe say like in meeting or discussions and work or something like that. And, and I don't know. Um, so maybe actually move that one. Well, here I can do it. I'm just going to move this up here. And then say like as. Yeah, okay. So these liaisons will also need access to uh, chaos, uh, chaos drive, like to start. So they have to be able to be logged in as chaos to start those docs, right? Uh, I don't know actually. So we could just provide access to the folders. So there's the working group folder. Yeah. And yeah. Add them as editors. Yeah, but they will still own those docs though. Chaos wouldn't own the doc. Um, maybe as part of publication, we turn over ownership to chaos. Okay, that sounds good. Um. 
Because yeah. I agree, it's pretty important that Kayak and the Google Drive side of things that Kayak is the owner of those because we've run into this before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for those who um, are kind of new to the community, we, when we create a new metric, we always do it under this chaos uh, owner because um, we've had folks who have started templates and started working docs and then, um, you know, gone busy and left the chaos community and then we can't get into the doc anymore. So like all that work was <laughs> is just hidden somewhere on someone's drive. So yeah. Uh, or change jobs and those get deleted. Yeah, that also is yes. <laughs> okay. So Ruth, I know you're on. I don't know if you're able to see this document at the moment. Is this helpful? Yeah, this is um, really helpful and it's like the breakdown of different activities on what in the Amazon Go June. Um, I was going to ask about the different. During the general meetings, um, does a liaison need to give like an update, like the general chaos meetings that happen on Tuesdays? Is there any just? I think so. I was just trying to have this role be with the context group and then common and metrics models. Okay. And then the ones that happen, since we are, we are limiting, we are keeping it at one just attending one common working group meeting. So yep. those conversations will happen on that meeting of the month. Okay. Yep. And if, and if honestly, I mean, it's quite possible that the liaison would show up and there's just honestly been no discussion of new metrics or metrics models. And the update would be that there's nothing that's been identified in the last month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another idea, I'm just going to throw this out there, it's completely up to you all who has the, those who have um, volunteered for this, you could split it up to where one person is doing like a metric specifically, the other person's doing metrics models, something like that, so that you could split the meetings, not everybody has to attend everything all the time. So just a thought, yep. you know, like Ruth, you might be more um, able to speak to metrics models because you've been around the chaos community a little bit longer. Maybe someone newer could do, you know, uh, the metric itself. It's a little simpler. Yeah, so. I think that, that works and also brings in collaboration too. So it's for me. I don't know if it's worth saying too, but like, we're you're not alone in this role. Like, we're all here to help and like, you're a little all meetings, I'm at all meetings, Don, you know, like Sean, like we're here and we kind of understand the process as well, so. Uh, what other question I have, do we want to make this limited in time? Like this is for six months or for a year? Cause sometimes it's leaving it open-ended might make people feel uncomfortable too. Of like, mm -hmm. oh God, I'm taking this on forever. Good idea. What do you think, Ruth? I'm thinking. Uh, I, I think we can we can start um I'm in the chaos community forever. So <laughs> I can't speak to other people. So um we can have um like call out for liaisons, you know. Um maybe every three months. Or I know we the way um the event budget works with our viewers like we just you know i think elizabeth has this pretty doc um pretty sheet where she keeps track of like people that are reviewers and people that are you know getting inactive and people that want to take a break and we could do that as well just to time. i like the three months um uh to um stay in this role for at least three months and can stay longer if you choose just leave it like that yep 
Yeah, that way nobody has to feel bad if they don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> they can just, you know, or they, yeah, or they can stay if they if they really like it. And then in three months, um, so like next would be October, I guess, or yeah, something November. Um, yeah, we can just take a look. And I think we can we can think about this as kind of like an experiment too. So we can we can try this, especially for like this first three months, and check in with all the liaisons and see if this is enough too much um and we can we can just continue to iterate on it it doesn't have to be perfect right now awesome yeah i really like that a lot Okay, anything else with liaisons? Thanks, Matt, for writing all this up. Thanks for the feedback. This is really bothering me. <laughs> Grammarly. Grammarly, take that. We just dismissed you. So we don't agree with you. And it, and it always, Grammarly always tries to hyphenate open source and it just drives me. Yeah, I don't like it. So I think we should start a, pet a petition to make Grammarly change that. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry, digress. Um, okay, so can we move forward to project badging? Are we good? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to ask on behalf of the all in team at GitHub, if we have dates for these, um, cause they have like a pretty big ramp up to looping everybody in and doing what they do. Um, and they wanna make sure that they are um, able to you know, speak to the badging and have all their assets and whatever else they need. So, um, yeah, if anybody on that team has this information, awesome. If we don't, um, let's talk about how we get to that point. So I know when we, when we designed the timeline for the project, we had like a lot of pushing to the pushing it forward because we started like pretty late. Um, so I. I can speak into like the Chaos Africa team. Um, we're we're planning on launching like finishing everything up with the website in like by the first week of September or you know by the end of August. So I I, I dropped the link to the and this is something we can also talk about like when is a good time to launch this. Um, uh, I dropped the link to the website on the chat and the what's currently going on is adding in new pages you know implementing new things feedback so that's what's currently going on but the website is live just that we've not we actually launched it yet so and the changes that we've been making are not major ones um the front end team is i think enoch has also it has also like there, there's also been some connection on the back end like you can pretty test some things but i think before this meeting of with enoch and we're testing um you know connecting repositories um so we can talk about when we want this to happen but on the chaos africa parts um i think we're looking at early september so So do we want to maybe shoot for um, like the end of September to have them announce it? Is that? Um, I I would like to ask when um, they expected this to be done or like they're working on our timeline. That's a great question. Um, I think they're working on our timeline with the assumption that everything will have been will have happened by the time of universe which is the beginning of november early november oh and just, just to be sure we are only working on one budge or all budgets um good question <laughs> i think well right now we just have the the one yes so i think that that's where we're gonna just you mean the bronze just bronze right yeah, the first bunch of bronze. Yeah, 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 just bronze. Okay, and then three, well, uh, as Ruth was saying, 
there is already stuff that we can test, but at least only internally. So if you go to budging.allinopensource.org and um, submit a project for budging, you'll be sure you'll get something like a report in your email. Um, but I think, Ruth, we should encourage the internal team to test so that they give us feedback on to where they think um, we need to polish up. There is already feedback that goes on on the development side. We are able to test this within ourselves to see what is actually working, what the expectations for use case were and what we're having. But I think when we have also the stakeholders here in the internal team um, test these things, they can shed for us um, a perspective onto what the expectations were. So um, please don't hesitate to go to budging.allinopensource.org and like navigate everything there so that um, you can give us feedback. For now, there are already things that we've noticed that are missing and we are trying to fix them. I should say we are in maintenance stage, but internally before we, we are just polishing some things to make sure that at least they're good for the public. But internally, you can always go and test and um, know what's um, being um, worked on at that time. So I think, I think, I think early September is a good time. Um, we can't say August, even when by August, um, I'm sure by end of August, we may be ready to. But yeah, since they're working on our time, as long as it's not before November, why not? And, and then something I was also going to um, say is maybe in the next meeting, you know, we haven't done any kind of demo in this meeting before, we just recently, you know, just brought the yeah. conversation. So maybe for next DI meeting, maybe you know, if you could do like a demo on how this actually works. Um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Get like um, feedback. Yeah, I was expecting um 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 who is it, Sarah? Yeah, Sarah. Um. I was having some authentication issues with the email she provided because I think from an admin side, there needs to be like um, um, authorization enabled. Um, the simple mail transfer protocol that we use to send emails from a third party, if it is not the real email client was disabled for that particular email that she gave me. So the only way you can send an email is by maybe using the Outlook um client but um if you want to send an email through a third party client the authorization was disabled so it's kind of an admin issue okay okay uh, yeah since we're sending emails direct from the back end and not from like the microsoft outlook client that's something we'll have to yeah take to sarah um let's see she can help us find who would help us fix that <laughs> yeah so like the admin who like um came up with that email should be able to like uh navigate to the microsoft 360 admin center and then go to the settings and then look like for services and um, find something like smtp authentication um which is used to which is used to give access to third party mail clients to be able to authenticate with that email and be able to send messages on behalf of the user. So if it is not somewhere within settings, then it should be like in that particular user because like when an email is created, it's attached to a user. So under the users, um, there could be settings that may need to be changed. Okay, let's um, drop that issue in. Uh, I think there's a Slack where Sarah's in there, right? Like yeah, more yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to give more details about it now. Okay. Let me write a Slack yes. message for it, plus yes. the error. Yeah. Um, Jacob, I see you have your hand up. Go for it. I think so. Uh, 
Okay, so I said that uh, I'm interested in uh, being part of uh, building the all-in-one focus. So, so I'm asking if it is possible to have access to the uh, GitHub and also uh, the Figma that is being followed. I will um I don't know Ruth and Enoch, I don't know if you understood, but I think Jacob's interested if yeah. uh, to be done to help out with that. Yeah, I I I got I got his um issue. I think it was about contributing. What I'm not sure of is um, whether if this was pushed like to, whether um, when the project budget was pushed like to the public domain in terms of meetings and updates, also the contribution was pushed to the public domain for like open source contributions. Because initially all the contributions were coming from a particular team that was selected until the bronze level is done and then we can have the other contributions open for open source contribution. But um, I'm not sure about now what should be public and what should enter at what particular stage. I think it's something that um, could maybe need a deliberation by all of us. But I was still of a view that um, since um, we are not yet done with the with the first level, we could have the team that's working on it right now, first polish up things and make them ready. And then like when we go to the other levels, um, we can always maintain this team, but accept contributions from the uh, open source contributors. Well, that's an opinion. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, Matt, go ahead. Uh, so I'm the one that put in licensing concerns and issues in here. So right now, if you go to, for example, um, all in open source, GitHub. So like if you click, yeah, if you click on all in, right now there's no licensing declaration here and the DEI.md file is sitting there. And this is something that did come from chaos and we're under an MIT license on the documents we create. So I think this needs to be like clearly stated because if we are gonna accept contributions to this, this needs to be clear. Um, also, the any contributor agreement needs to be stated, I think, because it's not in this repository at all. Um, and then things like the, if you go back, go like back to all in open source as the org. Um, like the badging, go to like project badging, that's under an MIT license. So should the DEI.md file be sitting there and not at the highest level all in org? Because it makes it is a file that is actually part of project badging. So I, I definitely think this needs to be sorted out before this any anything goes public or we we start accepting contributions. Because if there's no license declaration. I mean, that's not, then it's not, and it's not clear who owns the copyright on it. It's just all these, this is simple things. And then we won't get real contributions. And the reason I ask too is because there are other organizations like uh, GitLab, who has been on this call, who has expressed interest in this as well. And just in terms of like working with the DEI.md file. Um, and if, and if I, if we can't answer like how, any of this works and how contributions work, then that's not good. Do you think 
uh, there's interest in moving that DEI.md file, like template or main copy of it to chaos? I know Rhea had that question last week and it was a curious one. I mean, we're the one that made it. <laughs> I mean, we, this, we have the whole precedent. This goes back to like a year and a half ago when we started talking about this and i mean these are still in our uh, google docs so i mean it's it, it might make sense just to move it there so we keep the template because it is built on chaos metrics yeah and i, I mean we have it in chaos anyway so it's in a couple places and so we're kind of i feel like we're kind of losing like what is the canonical truth for that file mm -hmm. and then how it's licensed uh, Ruth, go ahead. Yeah, I, I do agree that, like, even currently where the di.md file is, it's kind of lost, like, on the all-in main repo because, like, there are a lot of things there and it just sits oddly in the in that all-in repo. So I do agree that we can move it to the project version repo because it makes more sense there. Um. That particular file and then also we need to like also think about like the licensing issues and concerns because i think on the GitLab meeting last week i think i had messaged elizabeth privacy and was like uh, do we um since they want to like um contribute how do they come in right so this is something else we also maybe we need to also like have a meeting with sarah um soon to talk about this Concerns. The most, the first most sensible move is what Ruth had recommended to me is to move it out of the all in like that repository and put it in project badging. Because that project badging repository is already MIT licensed. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I can also set up uh, just a meeting with uh, Sarah, just like a side quick, quickie meeting. Is that okay? Yeah, that's yeah, uh, totally fine. To answer your question, Jacob, right now we um, are still setting things up. So once we're open for like public contributions definitely bring it back to this group um so okay thank you so much thank you i appreciate it thank you for the interest too and we are just about out of time so that was really good timing for everybody um yeah thanks again everyone for coming um we'll continue these conversations next week and in the meantime of course uh, if you want to reach out asynchronously you can do that on slack or just wg-dei so we can continue conversations as needed there um have a great day everybody we'll see you here same time next week bye see you later